fasten your seatbelts, Brenton. It's gonna be a bumpy podcast. Now dig on this. Hop, 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 whoa, whoa. hop, 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 yeah. hop, hop, welcome to Classic Movie Banter. You know that podcast where me, that guy Brenton, <laughs> and that other guy Nathan. Hello. We talk about movies that are 20 years or older. 20 years. 70 years. Oh, precisely, actually. And we tell you whether those movies are still worth watching today and whether they are still worth recommending to your mates to watch on a Thursday night. Yeah, and let's see if we can recommend that today, Brenton, because it's a special day, isn't it, in this month of October? Because tomorrow, Brenton, is the 70-year anniversary of All About Eve. Hey, round of applause. There she is. There she goes. It's Eve. She's in the house. It's all about Eve. You know, I feel like there's a Pokemon spinoff that should happen that should be called All About Eevee. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) And... Christ. (laughs) That fan fiction is definitely out there somewhere, isn't it? Just like, oh. Maybe it's a prequel to like Killing Eve, you know, the TV show. <laughs> oh, I, d- I do know that. It, you know, but it brings up the question that Eve is such a funny name. Isn't it? When, when you go, oh, I'm going to name my future child, you know, Eve's not the first thing that springs to my mind anyway. I don't know about you. I mean, you know, God called the first girl Eve, so there's something. Ah, that is true. <laughs> God's just like sitting there by a tree going like, baby names, like, mm. <laughs> just like <laughs> cycling through <laughs> Uh, uh, how biblical. Uh, Nathan, All About Eve uh, was released in 1950, yes. obviously, because it's 70 years, and it was directed by Joseph L. Mankiewicz. Ooh. Uh, and written. It was written by him as well. And this is this is, this is is a fun fact for you all, our lovely listeners. Michael, oh, sorry, sorry, Joseph, not Michael. Fucking hell. Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm gone already. I'm just, <laughs> I've, I've, he's five drinks in, listeners. He's, all, he's too much on the bottle. I've made too many mistakes already. The episode's over. Give us five stars on iTunes. See you next week. Please do. Uh, so, yeah, Joseph, one can consecutive Oscars, spoiler alert, for both director and best writing screenplay for A Letter to Three Wives, which was released in 49, and then he won the uh, same two awards for All About Eve the year later. Wow. So that's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty, that's pretty cool. Good on you, Joseph. Good on him. Hope you're well. He is deceased. I'm about to say. Is <laughs> he ain't around anymore. <laughs> but his movie is Brent, and I'm going to tell you all about it, so sit back while I pitch you this movie. Can you pitch me the movie? All right, welcome, Brenton, to the 1950s. Whoa, time travel. <laughs> here we <Yeah>. are. <laughs> 70 years back. All right, he's alive again. We're here to talk about this film. And, uh, hey, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all about Eve. What it's about, Brenton, uh, is we're in the theater industry. We're in New York, back way back when. Uh, the war's finished, and... Eve is this young woman who's a big fan of this huge movie star played by Betty Davis. Um, what's her name? The mo- like Betty Davis's character? Do you know? Does anyone know? Oh, sorry, so sorry, sorry. I'm uh, asking you, even though I'm pitching you the movie. <laughs> I believe her character name was Margot. Oh yeah, Margot. That's right. So Eve is a huge fan of this big theatrical actress called Margot, and she's like, "Hey, I'm your biggest fan. Can I work for you?" And Margot's like, "Sure, go for it, kiddo." And over the movie, we watch Eve learn from. From Margot and watch their relationship develop in the theatre industry. That sounds like an, uh, a fascinating plot for a movie, Nathan. Two people become friends and their relationship grows. What a what a premise. It's it's not a romance movie. Get that out of your head, Brenton. It's like it's really hard to pitch because you have to go into this blind. I would say I would say okay. Can, I'm going to add to your pitch. I'm going to please say that do. This is not easy. The opening the opening scene. We know that Eve. That it's all about Eve. From the title, yes. we know it's all about Eve. We can say what the opening scene is, right? The opening scene, she reach, she's reaching the heights of the industry, of the theatrical industry as an actress. Yes. And in this movie, we find out how she got there. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's what I needed to say. Thank you, bro. You've done a better pitch, damn it. I'm meant to be giving it to you. <laughs> no worries at all. I'm here for our lovely listeners. It's all good. It's all good. I, I was just reading. I was just re- Actually, you know what? I was sitting here as the producer, and I was adding to your own, uh, your idea. Wow. You're so, you really want this project to happen. <laughs> I've literally got no idea what the plot is. I just... I just that just came to me in the moment. Wow. Um, so yeah, here's here's a bunch of funds and uh, go make a movie. <laughs> here's some war bonds, you know, <laughs> like, here's any financial means you need. Go have fun and I'll see you when it's all done and dusted at the premiere. Sound good? Sounds good, mate. Let's talk about it. I'll start, I think. All right, he's taking the car keys. I'll drive. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no one wants that, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, Nathan, I really like this movie. Good on you, Brenton. Well done. Thanks, mate. <laughs> I think that it is uh, supremely well made, very well directed. Performances are outstanding. Oh, yeah. From 
all of its cast, but in particular, obviously, our, our two female leads, which are, which are our two female leads, which are Bette Davis and Anne Baxter. But uh, I also want to give a special shout out to George Sanders. George Sanders, that's him. Yeah, yeah I mate. think I think those those two for me stood out. But in saying that, who doesn't recognize that voice? Where he's like, "Hello there, Brenton. We're going to talk about the theater." You know. So Here it's still go. like American, but it's like that kind. Is that of, transatlantic uh, kind of accent? Like, yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. There she goes, Eve. She's here in Broadway. I'm George. Those are the three standouts whose performances we'll get into uh, as the episode goes on. But uh, just know that this is an ensemble piece you know like I think all the this is an acting re- to a divorce which I thought would admit when I was watching this I'm like Brenton's gonna love this movie because it's just all acting <laughs> it's like- but uh, that's not the standout for me the standout is the screenplay for sure absolutely there's so many great one-liners in this movie but that doesn't isn't what makes a good screenplay in my opinion it definitely handles so many themes so many ideas there's concepts in this movie <laughs> yeah and, and a great premise that keeps you kind of on the edge of your seat and makes you feel things that going into it I don't think you were necessarily ready to feel like you weren't expecting no it's really hard to talk about this film the non-spoilers because so much of this movie is a surprise yeah totally there's so many things revealed and like I really don't want to sell it short but this is a movie that escalates and it yes. really really escalates in the best of ways possible and like I, the closest thing I can akin it to is kind of that first viewing of Parasite where like you kind of learn what the movie is and then it kind of rolls with it then it kind of goes up sure yeah yeah and things just escalate yeah yeah I, I think that's a that, that's a good comparison to make I'd also say that even if you are coming into this episode you're listening to us at the moment firstly thank you very much please go give us a review on the iTunes app uh, second, second second of all I think even if you if you are coming to this episode and you do know kind of spoilery elements of this movie but you've still never seen it you're still gonna get a supreme kick out of watching this you know what I yeah. mean it's still gonna draw you in you're still gonna feel about the these characters and and kind of understand their plight. You still you might you know you might not nec- you'll understand them, but you also like won't like certain characters and and maybe your opinions will change on characters you didn't like at the start. And Wait, I'm not going to tell anyone how they're going to react to a movie, Brent. And I'm I'm just saying I'm just saying possibilities are endless. With your reactions. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Look, like, yeah, this is a movie. It's this is a very layered movie. It's it's got it's an onion, it's an onion Brenton of a movie. Well, there's a Shrek reference. There we go. Look, 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 I'm I'm in the same boat as you, mate. I think this is one of the best movies I've ever seen. Wow. And it's and it's what a string we've had doing the Dollars trilogy and now this. It's like <laughs> we're, we've been spoiled, Brenton. What, what what's so unfortunate about like our podcast? You know, I guess like layout is that we kind of watch these movies and we talk about them like within the same week. You know what I mean? Well, we do it in a weekly period. Yeah. That's that's right. So, like, I, I can imagine that, like, people would see this and I can imagine myself, I, I don't know if this is going to happen and obviously we have our look back episodes where we look back and we go, oh, you know, but we do that every once in a blue moon, you know what I mean? So, it'll be interesting to see how this movie kind of holds up with the string of just amazing films. Yeah, because you and I both just watched this today. Like, it's still very fresh in our heads. Yeah, like, and, and like, not only that, but this year we've reviewed, like, some bloody yeah. standout <laughs> movies. Like, this has been probably the best, like, year for the podcast in terms of... The actual quality of the movie. Movies. Yeah, yeah. In- incredible films. Because you're not like, oi, let's talk about cats. <laughs> like, <laughs> now that you've gotten that out of your system, now that you've like finished that bowel movement, we can actually focus on the good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So so looking looking forward, I think that I can't imagine myself like not thinking of this film like in the same standard as like the good, the bad, and the ugly, as you know, the apartment. You know, yeah. as these, Well like- it's funny because we just did um Billy Wilder's like, you know, four standout films. And, totally. and like this feels like another like a t- like a cousin of theirs. This sounds like something Billy Wilder yeah. probably would have made. Like I, I would say it's a distant cousin. It doesn't feel like a Billy Wilder. It, to me, it doesn't feel like something that Billy Wilder has made. But like I understand that it's the same elk. You know, it's the same yeah. inspiration. Maybe I don't know. So yeah, um, again, like every out, el- every element of this is like it's supremely well made. And and like and yeah, and like and Brenton brought it up before. Like the acting is just on another. And it's funny because like it feels so ahead of its time. The performances, like the like, it's so naturalistic. And like it, it's it. There's two ways you see performances. One like the natural the kind of conversations but because all the major characters are in the theater industry and they're all prolific they kind of speak to each other in a very theatrical way in kind of a meta theatrical way you you actually brought up a point that i was i had a note here that i was going to bring up the same oh, thing so that, like, the, the performances are like you said they're ahead of their time because they understand the characters they're playing that they are kind of narcissists in a way they are you know from yeah. that elk that theatrical world and so like and uh, of the time as well you know like people are, like you know actors evolve over time in terms of like how they interact with the public and how 
how they're viewed by the public, right? Yeah. So like at this time, there's no social media, and so it's all very extravagant. Like these these Hollywood icons, these theatrical icons, these board, Broadway icons, they're very over the top. They're very larger than life because they kind of have to be for their careers yeah. to sustain and to be those personalities. And so this film understands the actors understand them as people, though. Is that is what you're getting at? Yeah, you get the you get the actual people behind it. That's it. Yeah. And so like. It's this. It's like you said. Layered is a great word, mm. or as I would say, complicated. But you know, uh, we you all know. know. <laughs> but it's funny because like I got so many Sunset Boulevard vibes from this, like Sunset Boulevard vibes from this, because it feels almost like a reverse Sunset Boulevard. And I go, I can't, I can't say exactly why because that's a spoiler. But especially like narratively, it kind of does feel like the opposite of that. But the dynamic of the of the of the old versus the new, I think it does really interesting things with it. Sure. I can see that comparison, but like I want to talk about this Sunset Boulevard thing because you're not the only person. Because uh, I did some research. Well, they came out the same year as well. Like <laughs> we we do our research on the show. We look up like you know other other critics' opinions and like other you know just and blatantly copy them. <laughs> but <laughs> oh damn, Nathan, I've revealed I've revealed our uh... secret. No, but I'm not sure if I necessarily agree with the comparison with Sunset Boulevard. I agree with elements of it, but I want to talk to you more. I mean, about you it. gotta agree to a comparison. You have to agree to comparisons. Sorry, I I understand some uh, elements of like the the comparison you're talking about but not fully like not to the extent that you're you're saying so i want to like get inside that and understand like we all right we'll save that for later on then but for now that's all basically that's all basically i wanted to say yeah i just just wanted to talk about how good the actors are and like betty davis like she didn't get an oscar for it we'll talk about the oscars soon i guess but like this is i think this is probably the best acting i've seen ever maybe (laughs) like that's that's a that's a big call. Yeah. Again, like I think I think I think I think I think it's worthy of that title. Every um, line she does is just I'm like, geez. It's like I mean people talk about Brando and I get it, but like she's like the counterpart to him, you know? Like Yeah, totally. It's just and like and the woman was nominated for ten fucking Oscars, like her whole career. So like you can see why. Did she ever win? Yes, twice I think, from memory. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, but not for this, weirdly, even though, like... Oh, also, fun fact, this is the only film ever to have four female acting nominations. Really? So, the two leads and the two um, supporting... Two supporting, yeah. yeah. Can we talk about the supporting cast as well? Because they're all brilliant. Yeah, everyone's everyone's wonderful. Celeste Holm, who played uh, Margot's close friend, who's the, the wife of the... She's great. The whole film, she's like, oh, jeez, what have I done? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> She's just all trapped. She's great. Nah, I, I, I love her. And I also love her maid, um, Birdie. Yeah, I was surprised she got nominated because she's not in it that much. No, but when she is, she she makes an impression. She's I think she's great. a. What's the accent she's got? It's like a working class. Like it reminds me a bit of like Betty Boop. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I can see that. Yeah, great though. I love her. She's good. But I, I think I thought she was fantastic, and um, she's a she's a she's an acting great. I think she was nominated like six times for an Oscar, and uh, she might have oh, won wow. one as well. Like yeah, like fantastic. She's, so that's awesome. But obviously, and Baxter as well. Like we're, oh. we're saying that Margot Bette Davis as Margot is fantastic as the lead. Uh, but the other lead is uh Anne as as Eve, and I think she's she's. she's Fantastic. There's there's elements of her performance that I'll get into that I don't necessarily love, and I, that's why okay. I would probably give it to I would give it to Bet over Anne. I hear there's, you. There's, is it Bet Davis or Betty Davis? Betty. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure I'm not fucking it up. <laughs> if we're fucking it, if, we, if we are both fucking it up, let us know. Maybe it's Betta. Betta Davis. <laughs> this is your new Diego Leone. <laughs> Who's this chick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this unknown actress that no uh, one had ever heard of had never been nominated for an Oscar no. ever oh, in her career. You know who else we haven't said? Marilyn Monroe's in this movie. Ah, she is. She is. She is. And she is so good for the bit she's in. Is this her debut? Was this like one of her I don't her think first it's movies? her debut. It's an early role though. It's like very, yeah, very right. early. And like, she's only in it for maybe like two or three scenes, but she's so good and does exactly what she needs to in those scenes. I'm like, it's, exactly. I'm so happy she's in it. But like all the cast are memorable. Like, so even she is memorable. Yeah. You're like, oh, it's Marilyn. Like, <laughs> so you're like, oh, why did the maid get nominated? It's like, I can understand. I know she's only in there for a few scenes and certainly not as many as some of the others, but like she, everyone does their job. Like it's such an ensemble cast. Like, yeah. The other, the, the director and the playwright, we have spoken about like are also really solid in this movie it was just so good and it's funny because like we're focusing so much on the acting but like it really is an acting movie it's one of those like and it's funny because even though the acting's so good you, like you said it before the screenplay is also so good i love the writing like oh this, i think i think the screenplay allows it you know what i mean it yeah allows the actors to to give the performances they also the because... whole movie is about acting that's what like yeah the movie is about so like totally and it's about totally. like actors being pissed off to other actors so it's like i i don't know about you nathan but like i have like a soft spot in my heart 
And I know it's it's kind of wanky because I know kind of Hollywood loves this as well. But Hollywood and I kind of like stories that are about Hollywood, that are about the theatre, yeah. that are about well, that also, world. Also, you are an actor, Brenton, so of course you're going to love stories about actors as well. I don't know if it's necessarily because of that. I think there's just a weird psychology within like performance yeah. and, within, and within that world. That it's like Hollywood knows how to write about Hollywood. And it is kind of that kind of... But here's the thing. It is a little bit wanky in that sense. But also this film kind of like makes fun of that. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. Like, like I think... I think it, like the it, film opens in, with the mocking like acting awards. Yeah, that's totally it, and and it it holds it holds nothing back. Is is what yeah. I'd say. Like films like this, films like I'd argue like Birdman's kind of the same. Yeah, like, the things about a theater. George Sanders channels a lot of what Birdman's about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like so, it doesn't. I like stories that like are, are truthful in the depiction of this industry and like and and the ins and outs of that and the and the people uh, and the personalities that that exist within that world. And so it is timeless. Yeah, this is still relevant today. <laughs> like this movie. Oh, and, and absolutely. What it's about. Yeah. I th- should, should we rate it then? You're fond of me, lobster, ain't you? Uh, obviously, thumbs up. Same. I think it could potentially be like what in 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 my top films I've I've ever seen as well. But uh, mm. time will tell. Time will tell, and we'll. We'll obviously revisit this at some point, and I'll I'll keep you keep you guys updated. Yeah, I really, really, really want to watch this again. Mm. And, and it's funny we've had such a good string of films lately on the show. Like it just it sucks that we do like a new one every week almost because I'm like I just want to rewatch a lot of these. Like they're so good. I know. Right? I probably I probably will. Like some of these movies I I've rewatched um since like like in the same week we'll do the episode and I'll yeah. go back a few nights later and I'll watch it again just because I know you've seen Drunken Master five times. <laughs> well, what can I say? Best movie ever made. Am I right? <laughs> we <laughs> I mean, we, I mean, it is, obviously. Like. <laughs> number one on the list. Number one is Drunken Master. Number two is It's a Wonderful Life. Number three is Network. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty good. But like yeah, this like this this is definitely giving me like Sunset Boulevard like, you know, double indemnity, like that kind of beautiful old Hollywood drama mm. kind of vibe. So, yeah, absolutely watch this on a Thursday night. This is just it's so good. It's so fucking good. Like, I don't know if you love I'm trying to think of like what would be like the mood for this? Like Well, I was just thinking the same thing. Yeah. I was like this is a movie that I think has the pen- potential to obviously like it made me laugh in the first few few seconds. Yeah. It's funny. It is very funny. It has the potential to make you laugh, but it is, it'll also hit hard. I think some people and it has the potential to like you know make you sad make you cry yeah. it'll, it'll make you feel that's what I mean like I, I don't I don't even know what mood you'd have to be in to watch this because it just covers so much ground yeah so that's exciting maybe so if, like melancholic or maybe if you feel defeated because it kind of explores that kind of emotion like I don't know you know what it's a big games of Game of Thronesy. that's what I mean there's there's also a there's also like a thriller element to it it really well, is you know what I mean so if any of that sounds enticing like pop just this thing on it. man like get, get it so on it's fucking good Ah, let's spoil it. You spoiled it. What? The movie. Oh. Okay, I want to open the spoiler section with this, Brenton. Go I think Eve might be the most notorious scheming villain in the history of cinema. <laughs> and I'm not even fucking with you. I think she is... Forget Cersei. This is like... <laughs> this is the scheming villain. Yeah, there was a period I really hated her in this movie. Yeah. I really hated And there's like some big moral questions I really want to ask you and have like a deep convo on it. Yep. So, do you think Eve has an overall plan from the get-go? Do you think like, when she first knocks on that makeup room door to meet Betty Davis, do you think she has a grand design of what she kind of of her like a scheme? Do you think like she has the scheme from the start, or do you think she's kind of making it up as she goes? As someone that's only watched this like very freshly, like I I haven't given this much thought to be honest. But so in first impressions, the facts the movie gives us, and there's a certain scene that, of why I think this. But yes, I do. I think she has the plan from the beginning. Mm. Why do you think? And this is interesting because when I watched that first scene where she tells the story she has that great monologue where she tells this story of, of her life to that point of as to why she's there and why she's seen the play every night oh i was brewing beer and it was shit yeah like i didn't believe that no at all like when when she first says it and and, and i think some people will so like you know, you know what i mean mm. but like for me for me and it's very clear when she has the scene later on with the critic that like she she went about this in the from the beginning and i don't know if necessarily the end goal of where she gets to is the intention but it's it's more of those things that the goals unfold as they go on it's like she set herself little goals you know if you if you want to if you want to learn how to set goals watch eve in this movie <laughs> because like <laughs> if you ever want a goal plan she's got like a little calendar in front of her like here we go because life would still be pretty good if she got to where she gets to in the first 20 minutes you know what i mean oh, yeah. but it's it's 
but it's about how she keeps going, and and she has some mm. failures along the way. Don't be, get me get God, me wrong. This deals with greed so well, but but I I yeah, it does. It's a it's a great film on greed and power. Yeah, and power. Oh, and that's a huge thing we didn't bring up in the non spoilers. Feminism. This is one yep. of the best feminist piece of work I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Um. In what sense? It explores womanhood really well, and I think Betty yeah. Davis has some great monologues and some other characters are well on the role of a woman, and like I'd it deals agree. with marriage and like it's it's great. That's what I mean. Like so, like there's there's like there's like power versus the familial. It's 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 this it's this interesting thing that like these characters go through, and Eve is interesting as well because um I and the more I think that that she had the plan from the beginning is because the ending kind of enforces that as well with the the young girl at the end. Yeah. Oh, Oh man! Oh, because I because because it was such a brilliant movie. When you first see that new girl, Mike, I was okay. Here's here's my line of thought. I was <laughs> when you first meet meet like the chick in the house when she comes back from the award party. I'm like, really? She already has a fan club. I was like, <laughs> she hasn't been around for long. How the fuck does she have a fan club? It's no, I I bought that. It's it's like I bought it. my my mindset was more. This ending's gonna either end in two ways: the way it did end, or the other way. I was thinking, I was like, it'd be interesting as well to see Eve like see through this girl and to like just throw her aside instantly and just know it was. Going yeah, on. yeah. But I like that like she gets replaced. Like we see that that's it's a, it's a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. Um in this and it's also the, which I like I like that message this movie deals with age but it's also like it's also about like narcissism and the se- narcissism in the sense that Eve like you know should by all accounts with the smarts she shows in this movie again she only makes a few mistakes you could say in terms of her, her rise to stardom her rise uh, to, to gain power in this industry but at the end like she should if she was still on top like make that choice to throw that girl out and know what was going on straight away and see through the bullshit because that's what herself had portrayed but it's someone that's like so egocentric but by the end it's like it's almost like she does see that happening but she just chooses to like play along with it because that's that's a game in itself and it's gonna yeah. probably be her undoing at some point you know what i mean well that's the thing i love that and you think she'd learn that lesson because betty davis is responsible for a lot of her own undoing and it's funny though she's a, she's right from the beginning well not from the very beginning but as soon as she catches on to what's like going on she's correct and the film does a good job as well is that like it keeps you guessing whether she actually is correct or whether she is just as as narcissistic and egocentric trick as Eve is revealed to be. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is an unlikable quality to watch, right? So... For me, I was watching it and I was going, I didn't believe Eve's story at the start. And I think there's shit she's doing from the start that isn't entirely honest. But at the same sense, I didn't know to the extent of like how far she was, like far gone yeah. she was. As is revealed at a certain point in this movie. Well, that's that the thing. Because like, oh, so much of the movie, so much of the movie, I was sitting there like trying to work out what Eve is up to. And you're and you're trying yeah. to put the pieces together. I remember just sitting there going, oh no. Oh no! As you kind of see, like heard the steps that she takes. So yeah, I, I guess this is a good point to chat about. I know I said there was some aspects of that performance of Eve that I didn't necessarily agree with, and there was a oh, scene. Yeah. There was a couple of scenes. One was the one where she makes the move on Margot's partner, um, the director. Oh yeah, I, his name I was like, what, what are you doing having a crack on him? So like that makes sense to a certain degree, but like as in like why she does it, like her motivation. No, I I understand why she does it, and it's fine yeah. that she does it. But there was mo- that was one of the moments that she was a bit too villainous, that she was a bit too. Certain Ah. I don't like that with the character. I don't like if she plays plays it like that. I don't think she was like moustache twirling. Like I don't think she was. There was moments <laughs> in the, there's a couple moments that I was like, it's too much. Like it's it's just like it's it, you're better off. It, it, it would have been that there were moments that I was like, I just didn't buy. It. I was like, it's not as real as like the rest of there's nuanced and as real as the rest of these performances have been the whole time. I get it because I get what the character is meant to be and like what their intentions are, but it was a, just a bit too a bit too full on okay. for me. You know what I mean? Like there was just, it just kind of took me out for a brief moments and that that was one of the moments but i thought in general you saw the subtext like in the performance yeah in general but there was moments that i was like i'd like more subtext ah, okay. in this like I'd, I'd like more i'd like more subtlety in the way that this this is this is happening because yeah but in saying that not to say that obviously that performance stands out and it's a great performance but i think that margot is like such the hero of this film you know what i mean like i love i love like where she ends up like in terms of like the decisions she yeah. makes and the lessons she learns from this storyline i like that it becomes about her stepping away from that you you know what yeah. I mean? And not succumbing to it. Not becoming, uh, say, the character in... Um, Sunset Boulevard. Well, like, she wants to come back to it. Well, that's why I saw so many parallels. Because, like... Because in Sunset, you see the older actress wanting to return. Whereas here in this one, you see... The old actress wanting to leave, and for for a large part of the of the film, like it seems like it's gonna be like a self continue. She's gonna be continue to be self destructive and throw away her relationships yeah. and whatnot. But there's a point that she like makes. Well, her that's peace. the thing because she sees that I think it's the threat of her husband. I think that she sees that there was a possibility that he could leave her. So I think she's like, and she has that great moment in the car where she's like, I now need to be a woman. 
Yeah. The, oh, my favorite line, there's a lot of lines in this movie, but my favorite one actually in the whole movie was that scene. She says a line where she says, the things you drop off the ladder so you can move up faster. And you see her kind of wake up to that. Yeah. And it's, um, I, so I love that she learns that lesson. And I, and I think the husband's one part, um, part of it that like the threat of him leaving. And also that causes her to be self-reflective of what she's, you know, the action she's taken during the course of the movie. But it's also Eve herself, I think that is, uh, makes her realize about herself that like with this about her industry and this about her career and her life and where she wants to be in 20 years because because she she sees Eve and it's like she could easily I think play Eve back and yeah like, you know but she kind of learns to let Eve kind of do her thing like towards the end that's it she goes you know what I'm gonna just go tour this show and that's gonna be great and then I'm gonna marry the man I love yeah and celebrate my success and it's kind of funny because here's what I have a bit of an issue with because Eve is kind of like Ragnarok in the sense that like you know she's here to herald the end of days for Betty Davis you know, she is Ragnarok. So mm. that's why I was surprised at the start of Eve's career, at the end, we suddenly have, like, the new Eve arrive. You know what I mean? Like, Eve doesn't have to get old for new Eve to arrive. New Eve kind of just rocks up from the get-go. Yeah, totally. But why is that, why is that an issue? Because I though? thought for new Eve, it should be at the end of... Oh, her name's Phoebe. It should be, like, when Eve's older, not when Eve's young. So, like, unless it's meant to comment about, like, how the industry moves quicker or, like, they'll just get younger and younger earlier. I don't think it's necessarily commenting on the time difference or, like, you know, age necessarily. I think it just shows that maybe perhaps it's not age. Yeah. <laughs> maybe just the new model. It's like Inspector Gadget 2, Brenton. The new model just arrives and suddenly <laughs> you get out of date and maybe you have to fight crime together. Yeah, well, the fact is at the end of this movie, Eve's going off to Hollywood. Yeah. Which is a big no-no. I was like, no, we've seen Barton Fink. We know how that goes. Don't do it. So yeah, it's 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 an interesting take. And, and it's funny as well that in the end, like because that that the the Hollywood thing calls into question um uh, the the critic character. George Sanders. Oh, he's got that famous name, Deloitte or DeWitt or something. Do do yeah. do it do it yeah I can't remember his first no it's like Einstein or like Edison no it's Edison Edison okay cool Edison do it it calls into question that character and also Marilyn Monroe's character because to a certain point Marilyn Monroe is that is that is someone he sees as that up and yeah. comer is that person you'll have that... a good career ahead of you <laughs> she's like down on drinks and the way he discards her is that he sends her to Hollywood you know yeah I mean? he's just like you're off to be in t- you're off to be in Hollywood and it's back when there was such an antagonism between theater and Hollywood like back then like now it's way more relaxed and everyone's like That's do it. both but like it was such a thing back then you really see accentuated in this movie absolutely yeah and it's a uh, and so it's interesting at the end that he sends he sends eve off to off to off to be in movies you know have a have a, do a few movies and have a movie career. yeah and she's so against that and it just shows because one of my favorite scene in this movie is the scene where the confrontation between dewitt and um and eve oh yeah because it's the biggest plot twist in the sense of like she comes in and you're expecting one thing and what she says makes sense and that she's gonna she's gonna take the play right and she's gonna ruin that marriage which is she's... ridiculous like she doesn't need to do that like well it's it's inter- well you know i don't know if the if she doesn't really need to do anything in this movie like i no, said but even for like the career that she wants she doesn't have to be married to the best player in the country and and the fact that like he and he just sits there the whole thing and he just listens to this whole and thing. he knows the truth like yeah and he, and he just questions it he just he yeah, he questions it a few times and he goes, okay. And he asks the questions he need to. And then he just goes, right, bitch, listen here. <laughs> I'm going to drop some truth bombs. I own you and I know every single thing you've yeah. done at this point. And I know why you've done it. And I know your real past. And like, and it's funny because we don't really get the clues. It's funny because we don't get the clues before that he does. We get that he's interested, but we don't know that he actually holds all the cards yet. I knew I knew that we had to, f- I, for me, I had to find out what was really going on with Eve in the sense of like, the fact it needed to be confirmed that it was a lie the whole time from the beginning. Oh, yeah. That, that from she put on with the coat and the hat and like where she'd been the oh we knew, you, you knew there was something mysterious but you wouldn't have called it to be exactly that no I, it's not that i would have called it to be that but i needed to know that my suspicions were correct yeah. you know what i mean otherwise i just feel but the film deliberately like like you know rises those suspicions like you're meant to be questioning her the whole time totally totally and so like that's what the, what that's what makes it such a great scene yeah. and like in terms of like that he he gets the one up on yeah. her like she makes mistakes like she like whether like you said like she doesn't need to necessarily go for the director to but go she just gets for greedy and arrogant she does with those her power. Things. that's it it's so funny as well my favorite detail in that scene is that when her real name is addressed she goes from eve to Gertrude. Like, they just gave her the most, like, you know, Gertrude kind of name. It's just, it's the best juxtaposition, the way it's delivered as well. I really love that. I like as well that she just assumes that she can get the play right. And it's, and one of my other favorite scenes is like when we go back to the beginning, we flash, we go back to the flash forward at the start of the film uh, when she's accepting that award and she gives that speech and she thanks the four other characters, you know, the, the uh, Margot, Bill, and the, her friend and, and the playwright. And the way they just react oh to her thanking them is, 
is fucking it's so priceless. funny. The two men, how they're just like, yeah, bitch, <laughs> thanks for that. No worries. We've got our Watching awards. that, I now want to watch um the Oscars like from previous years and see if like during acceptance speeches, if like we see other similar reactions from other actors, <laughs> just to see if there's this evil subtext to like some actors' speeches. For sure. Like it's 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 so fun. And and Margot gets the last laugh in the movie. That's what's so funny about it, is that like her last line to Eve is just like the best line. It's something like Yeah, it's like put that put that trophy where your heart is if you had one it's like, yeah yeah it's great and she's like and you just see Margot and and she's like a person again she's happy yeah she's grounded and she's like you know living life and Eve goes back to her apartment won't even go to her own like awards ceremony like yeah. art celebration after party she goes back to her apartment throws her shit around and has like a mini tantrum and you see the real Eve in that last scene like the way she treats that young girl and like how foul she is how kind of crude she is yeah in a way. which she always was she just learned to hide it well that's exactly like, like, and it's beautiful that sequence where the new actress like tries on the dress and that's like the final frame of the movie and like I know right and, and we're like oh, and then the audience is like oh no <laughs> like it's all gonna happen again we're like oh it's the worst yeah I don't know if I was like oh no I was kind of like oh I was like oh yeah like that that just you're almost waiting for that here we go again <laughs> like at the end of the movie yeah like oh and it, this, mil- this film is so beautifully cyclical in that sense because it just it goes back and forth like I love I love when we first meet Eve and we see her first kind of get Margot in her tendrils like the way that she she actually had the way she runs the room how she manipulates it she kind of walks her way in and it's funny because you think that like Margot holds the power because she changes her accent she suddenly becomes very posh and like you know here's a fan of mine it's such a brilliant scene that scene in the dressing room because when Eve is um, introduced to Margot I think Margot asks her if she wants a drink or whatever and at the same time her friend uh, speaks over Margot and they, they say two things at the same time and there's just like a brief it's, it's such a good moment there's such like there's a brief pause and then Eve, always very calm, very polite, but like with a real intensity, acknowledges Margot and then acknowledges the other question. Like it's, yeah. it's just, it's just brilliant. And so straight away, she has the, she is like the, has the most power. And it's funny because you can see her like get silently angry when Bill doesn't give her the time of day. Like when he go, rushes in to see his wife and she, and they say, look, this girl's called Eve. And he turns, he's like, hey. And then like he goes straight back to Betty Davis. I don't know if she's necessarily angry, but she just plays the room. Like she plays the room so well and somehow manages to win. Yeah. Yeah. Even though the maid calls it out, she she, she yeah, knows from the totally. get go. She's like, "This thief, she's not good." <laughs> totally, I love that scene as well when um Betty Davis starts to catch on and she just goes to the maid and goes, "You haven't liked her this whole time, have you?" The maid's like, "Oh, bitch, now, bitch, now you're talking to me like, <laughs> it's come like on. where were you twenty minutes ago?" She's like, "Sure, sure." She's like, "What have you been doing this movie?" Oh, this is there's some great confrontations in this film. My favorite one actually was when I thought you would have really liked this as well when you see the actor versus the playwright so when like they're standing on each end of the theater and like bill was like oh for word for actors all you do is fucking parrot words and betty davis is like well we have to make up shit on the night sometimes because you're a shitty writer and, like you kind of see the two professions going at it and i really love it it's a great scene i love i love is that the scene in the theater yeah itself? yeah yeah because we'll talk about that a bit more later on as well but like i love as well that the producers always just kind of sitting <laughs> yeah, there like he's just dying like oh poor max i, like, I just he's love- just sweating the whole movie i love it i love these do you have any bike Cub soda. <laughs> he's such like I'm trying to think of his like equivalent Game of Thrones character. Just the one he's a bit like like Sansa back in the early days, where like she just didn't know what was going on, was just purely a pawn. She she's Mace he's Mace Tyrell. Yes, he is Mace Tyrell. He's- yes, thank you. That's exactly who I was thinking. <laughs> yes. He's such a mace. He could even be played by Mace. Just see a mace just sitting in the theater, just very confused. Like, <laughs> how did I get here? I love how he's introduced as well because I love that the critic is the narrator. Like, yeah, love- well, we get a couple narrators, and I actually like the narration in this movie. And uh, I do too. I love that like how he introduces the room from his perspective like how how he views like how the critic views the director and yeah the you know and says like you know they're just the small awards because all they do is and it's kind of like with some sarcasm it's like all they do is basically all the work yeah you know what I mean like and, and and then the actor is just the light on top and they get all the recognition but I like how he like introduces Max as well and he's like yeah there's some producers that basically work their butts off and like you know we'll 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 know that they might be taking a hit but they're like the true artists and then there's this guy <laughs> that just is kind of like it's great <laughs> so he just finances it he does fuck all it's just like just let him do his thing yeah it's great Max he's a really solid actor yeah. as well the whole time like some of his discussions when they're having discussions of the films are really interesting and the way that um, there's a scene where Betty Davis is like pissed off at him and she like flicks the coat in his face and he like curls up into the fetal <laughs> position on this chair at a point it's priceless like it's 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 great it's in that confrontation actually it's so bloody funny it is such a great movie and it's so and it, it, the Game of Thrones comparisons keep coming up because like 
it is that level of like political thriller. Like when she invited the newspaper critics around, I was like, holy fuck, like you're going there. It's like, it's like the industry, dude. It's like, you know, it's so political and it's about who you know and like- But also like like doing whatever it takes to get to the top. Like, Yeah. The thing I have to bring up as well is um, I really like the character of the wife of the playwright that she's introduced and it's like she's not involved in the industry really in any way and she's just there as a friend and she's like kind of the outside perspective the whole time. But she's a piece of shit as well. Yeah. What was she thinking doing that prank? Of of taking Margot away for the weekend and then like bringing her back late and like, you know, the the thing with, oh, we're out of fuel and all that shit. And so Margot misses the show. But as well, like you said, that Eve calling all the critics and then and and her organizing, you know, that event to make it an event. And and it's it's just sickening. And like the regret obviously that she feels of just like playing a fun prank on like I think it's like a matinee performance or something as well. Like it's not it's meant to be a nothing performance and yet everyone's there and it becomes It's this whole thing. Thing. Oh man, like it, like, but and I was like, what a shitty friend. And then the fact that it comes up again because one of my other favorite scenes is that yeah, the blackmail where she's like, you're gonna fucking get me that part. Oh, oh, <laughs> and then she's like, oh no. That was when I was like, I really hated Eve. And then I love that the movie made the choice to be like that. Then instantly became relevant. Yeah, because Betty Davis. I've made my peace with this, oh, and I'm fine. And it's and and there's that great moment where she just laughs. There's that like release of tension. Yeah, and it's probably the biggest laugh of the movie, like literally in the movie. And I. I I almost like had a release of myself of like I'm like oh just yeah. <laughs> like, it's gonna be okay everyone like the end of that scene I was like like obviously she kind of got away with it but I was also like the end of that scene I remember just thinking well Margot's won like you know what I mean like Margot's in the sense that she yeah well she won in the sense like she doesn't need to be the biggest actress also she's had that career we don't know if Eve will like that's the critic it. is like oh Eve's pretty great but we never see that we never yeah that's it we never actually see her performing that's the funny thing and I think it, and even though I'm sure like Anne Baxter will do an amazing job I don't think we need to? No, and also we do see the performance because we see how good an actor she is the whole time. There we go. Yeah, because she's acting the whole. Yeah, because she's pretending to be someone else. I was like, yeah, we do yeah. see the performance. And maybe that's yeah, why. Yeah. I was like, oh, no. What? I remember thinking, no wonder this this woman's such like so revered and is like seen as like such like a you know a, a talent or whatever. Because like shit, man, she's getting practice every minute of every day. Oh. But it's also sad. That's why I'm like Margot wins because it's like you know she makes peace and like moves on. And it's yeah, happy. it's just a good movie, isn't it, Brenton? Ah, uh, it's a great movie, mate. It's, it's so a great fucking movie. good. Can we? <laughs> talk about um the oscars about with this movie yeah sure dude the year that this was nominated in the oscars i just want to read out the best actress like like fight for that year so the five nominees for best actress that year was june was judy holiday for born yesterday then from all about eve it was both Anne baxter and betty davis then from caged it was eleanor parker and then the last nominee was gloria swanson in sunset boulevard so for me the big two fights would have been between betty davis and gloria swanson right yeah right but they didn't neither of them won and it's funny because i thought then that this was the premise for the tv show feud betty v Jones. Have you seen that? No. But now no. I want to watch that because even though this is not about that, I kind of just want to see Betty Davis in real life just like fight over an Oscar. <laughs> Out of interest, do you think that there's a few things that might have happened here? Yes. Because for me, if I was gonna cho- if I was gonna choose from this list, I'd choose Betty. See, this is hard, man. I don't know if it's that hard. Like for me, like I'd I'd choose Betty from that list. But I understand that like why it would be hard. Yeah. You know, I I can I could, I totally agree that it is a tough. Also, how the fuck did Judy Holiday win for Born Yesterday? Obviously, we need to see that. Yeah, we need to see it like before we can really make a comment on it. But I will say that I think that potentially what's happened here is that there's two lead nominations for All About Eve in the same category. Yeah, this always cancels each other out. It's always a bad idea. Gloria Swanson v. Betty Davis like no one would have maybe got like there was no getting behind one if that makes sense so like that probably split votes as well and so it kind of makes sense that like someone else won yeah it does make sense it reminds me a bit of when Brad won for Hollywood when like last year when you had um bloody um Pacino and Pesci nominated for supporting yes and no I think like to a certain extent yes but also I think that as the award season went on Brad just became an easy vote yeah absolutely it was like everyone just gets behind the one like because like that was a tough category that was like who was in that that was like yeah it was all established actors it was like it was really tricky was it like it was a hell of a category yeah so yeah it's interesting oh god the oscars are so like about that there's like how many votes can we get it's po- like oh, this it's movie it shows the industry is very political oh I'll tell you what <laughs> should we do some special segments special segment Ooh, so special brenton do you think this movie is worth the remake yes and no i say no because it's still timeless like i said before and it's still relevant and it, and it's great still still great to watch so like no, but like yes, in the sense of like it'd be interesting to see like a modern take on yeah, this as well. I can see the mediums change for twenty twenty. Like I can you yeah. know how you know how yeah. I'd do it? I'd do it where you'd get an influencer on Instagram be best friends with this like random person in LA. A little bit like Ingrid Goes West. Yeah. And you suddenly you see the kind of what actually has happened in real life. Where like you see like I think who 
what was it? Was it one of the Jenners or like, was it Gigi Hadid where like they just hung out with someone famous? Or like Paris Hilton, for example. Yeah, Kardashians, where they hung out with someone famous and then become bigger than them. That's I think it. you could easily just do a similar movie like this, but with that. But if you wanted to see another adaption, well, last year, uh, a stage adaption was actually made of All About Eve. But only last year. Like, it's amazing it took that long. It is amazing, actually. It does and, feel very uh, theatrical. It starred Gillian Anderson as Margaret oh. Channing. And um, we got to talk about my favorite actress, Lily James as oh Eve Harrington, God. who I think is perfect casting for that role. Like, I, I would have loved to have seen oh that production. My, I would have loved to see that production too. We could recreate the scene where we go backstage to Lily James and say we're huge fans, and then we'll be the new Eve's Brenton. No, what will happen is oh no, that, don't be the Phoebe Brenton. <laughs> I will no, I'm not being Phoebe. I'd like go back to Lily James, and I'll be like, oh, I'll work for you, and then I'd be her butler, and I'd just be like that for like the rest of my <laughs> life, and just hang around and just be like, Lily, you're so perfect. <laughs> I'm like Brenton. How's how's working for Lily James? And you're like, this is the best thing I've ever done. Like, <laughs> you're like, you're like, it doesn't even matter how it is as long as oh, I'm there. <laughs> I really want to see that. I wonder if it's recorded. I like as beautiful as Lily is. Like, I would actually love to see that performance. I think she'd do it really well. Yeah, no, me too. Me too. We're, we're, we're joking here in the podcast, obviously. I'm not going to go backstage and uh, stalk Lily James, but, you know. Uh, should this be a musical? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, this movie actually is a musical, ah. funnily enough. You know what's so funny as well? This is all behind the scenes. So, in the weeks leading up to this episode, I said to Brenton, oh, I'm so excited to, you know, talk about the musical All About Eve. <laughs> and then I just watched the fucking movie. And it's not. And it's not uh, a musical. I remember having that in the back of my mind as well. I was like, I don't, I don't know why I thought it was. Because there, there's a musical based mm. on this story, Applause, which has, um, which won the Tony, I think, for Best Musical in, in 1970. Jeez, well um, done. Uh, when it came out, so good on it. But what's interesting about that production was that it came out in 1970 and it was based in 1970 because uh, they couldn't get the rights to the film to do a, a direct oh, adaption of the that's film. that's interesting. So that musical is different and it's based on the short story that the film was based on that's exactly right so it's got different characters it's still got eve and it's still got margot but a lot of the supporting cast are different that's characters so like the critic that's um in this film and like obviously such a huge part of that plot is actually a pr- the producer of the play that's interesting it's really interesting and like i was reading the synopsis and it's quite different to like is it better or worse or no i think it's worse i think it's worse i think it's i think it could still be powerful when it like still has like the same major beats but the whole ending is like completely different Maybe maybe that's the reason why All About Eve on the stage took so long to bring there for 2019. Maybe because maybe the rights holders are just very protective over it. Yeah, I think so. But like, so yeah, it just never really yeah. eventuated. And obviously applause is renowned in its own regard, but it's a different beast, which I think kind of works. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to... I hate just like direct adaptions to musicals. Like some things like should be musicals and some things aren't. And we don't... It, it, not everything needs to be adapted into a musical, but I'm glad that there's changes enough that they're their own... Uh, they've got their own identity. So that's it cool. It is cool. It was on a couple years ago, I think. A couple years years or in in sydney they did a production of it at hayes i'm pretty sure oh, that's interesting they got some applause be funny if one night there was just no applause because it was shit they're like oh god damn it <laughs> we even fucked that up <laughs> oh god like it's in the title oh. you know what's really funny is yeah just like that do that you know what's really funny as well so fox holds the distribution rights of this film obviously because it was made by fox which means disney owns all about it damn so maybe we'll see a disney musical of this eventually maybe but uh, i maybe i think that could there's be a there's nothing possibility, about this that makes it not for children like there's yeah, nothing totally. swearing even thematically like like children could watch this i just don't think they'd get much out of it <laughs> Kids are like, so is that how I should go through life? The parents no, are like, no. No. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll go backstage and be Tom Holland's butler. They're like, you stay away, little Timmy. <laughs> you stay away from Tommy. Don't get caught in that web. Would this work as a video game? I think it would. I think it would too. You know what I think about this? I think this could be like a real, it'd either be like a visual novel or it'd be like a choose your own adventure type game. Yeah. So have you ever been playing a video game and you get those shitty ads for like shitty video games where it's like, choose your adventure, find your ideal wife. You know, it's like, like there's really shit iPhone totally. games. Be the Hollywood star. I feel like that kind of game. Yeah, totally. I think there's a video game in that you play as Eve and you've got to fucking get to the top and you've got to play everyone and like, uh. you know, try and like be the characters and make the correct choices to get to the top totally that'd be so much fun yeah i think it's gonna be that exactly like, that's the premise for the game and i think it's done graphically like a shitty iphone game like that like there's a paid <laughs> yeah, firewall totally. like every like three minutes and you gotta like watch some like <laughs> shitty video and i don't know like oh you get reputation that's like the currency for the game like yeah yeah i th- think it'd be great and you finally get to the end and they're like congratulations you're now a horrible person yeah i'm down for that apple get on it <laughs> do it well nathan hey what stills this movie <laughs> 
it's blinding. What was funny when I was watching this movie is that I never chose a still. There was nothing that really stood out to me. As, as great as, as well made as it is. Yeah, it was hard for me too. We're both like, what the fuck do we talk about? <laughs> but I was probably more, it's more a thing of the film in the sense of like, I was so impressed by the movie that I just was never thinking about that. I was so drawn in and I just was like. Yeah. But to be honest with you, even in the other episodes we've done, I've never been on, on like a still hunt. Like it's always just presented itself in the moment. Like, And it's been, it's been a natural thing. But Nathan, you. I did find one. I did do some. It, it was just a moment where like, you know, bloody Betty Davis is running late for the audition to see Eve act. And and she's like chatting to the producer at the front. And next to it is, she stands next to the poster for the touring show that she's actually going to do. And and listeners, if you want to see what this looks like, uh, click on the links below. This poster is very bizarre, wouldn't you say, Brenton? I would say it is as well. It's uh, <laughs> what, 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 what style of drawing would you call this? It's kind of like a stick figure mixed with some... <laughs> Picasso, I don't know. It's, like, it's so like, weird. It's pretty... it's, I don't know how we articulate this in an audio medium, but like, I think the show's called like All With Wood or something like that. It's like this woman in like a ball gown dress, but like she's got like literal lines for arms and a neck. And like she's holding this yeah. gun and it has like this kind of like Betty Boop eye expression on her face. So like, it's so weird. And like you see the wig that eventually Eve wears at one point. Like that's in the poster. Yeah, and it's like those ringlets. It's like, yeah. yeah. If you, Brenton, okay. If you're going to go to see a show on Broadway and that was a poster for one of the shows, would this entice you? Probably not. No. <laughs> no, I don't think it would at all. It's just so weird. What can we say? But what's funny about it as well is that the shot's chosen that she's standing in. And I think this is a good choice as a shot, actually, because she's standing in front of the poster. And it points out this kind of, like, thing that the movie is always pointing out, that she's kind of too old for the characters yeah. she plays now. Even though she plays them really well. I just love that. Like, the biggest dilemma for her is, like, I've turned 40. And then she was like this big, oh, kind of sigh after that. I love it when people just look at her and they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, you've got the world at your feet. You're fine. Are you a big fan of like the movie industry? This is this leads us well to poster talk. The movie industry now has been pretty shit at their posters, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Whereas I feel like the theatre industry has been still good, like in general. Yeah, I, I'd agree. I feel like theatre is still pretty good with their posters. So it depends on the show. Like there's a lot of... We're talking about the Playbill posters. Yeah, that, like I think there's a lot of like artistic merit in some of those posters, but also there's ones that basically... If like if Benedict Cumberbatch is in a show or something, they're just gonna put Benedict Cumberbatch's face on the poster, you know what yeah. I mean? And that's the poster for like for big names or whatever or big like movie stars mm. that come and do plays. Like it's always usually their face, but when it's not that, and sometimes you know that rule isn't obviously cemented. No, they didn't put Bradley Cooper on the poster for Elephant Man, didn't they? I thought they did. Oh, I just thought they wouldn't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just regular old Bradley Cooper. It was like his, it was like his headshot or whatever. Speaking of which, like that looked like a good production. I would have liked to. Have oh, seen I him. was so he was there. I don't know if I ever told you the story, but when I was in New York, I went to see Book of Mormon and um, he was in the audience because that night he had a break from Elephant Man. So he came next door to our theater to watch the show. Fuck, man. I, you've never told me really? this. Really? Have I never told you? So I saw Bradley nah, Cooper. you've never told me yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. That's so he cool. Was up in the, he was up um, at one of the booths or whatever. And it's funny because like mum's like, is that Bradley Cooper? And like, I look, I'm like, oh yeah, there he is. He's just sitting there with um, his girlfriend at the time or whatever. And it's funny because they did Book of Mormon and at the end of the show, um, they finished one performance during it and the, all the actors of the main cast looked up at him and they kind of and he kind of like waved down at them <laughs> like during it I'm like there's Brad yeah it'd be pretty cool did he have his long locks at that stage I think he did but yeah I think I think it, it's obviously his best hair and like yeah, yeah. He's, he, it was like that hangover one kind of haircut it was yeah dude it was so yeah, fucking it's a good cool. look and I'm like yeah you do you Bradley Cooper you be elephant man it's funny in New York I saw the star I saw in New York was Eddie Murphy yeah yeah you've told that story on the podcast yeah 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 so like so yeah, if you're in New York you're bound to see someone famous at some point would you ever do a star's tour like go around the houses and be like look there's that celebrity nah like, fuck fuck that no nah. i just stalk them i just stalk them myself <laughs> yeah. so that takes out all the fun of organizing yourself you know what i mean but also i kind of <laughs> like this i like the serendipity of like bumping into a celebrity like every time i've gone to a convention and there's a celebrity it's not as fun because you know it's coming yeah, no. and you're like when i've like been to a convention and being like oh look there's like mark hamill or something i've been like oh He's, he's there. Can we be honest, though? If there was one time I wanted to go to Star Wars Celebration, it would be when Ian McDermott was revealed to be in The Rise of Skywalker and he just popped out. Roll it again. Like, what a what a moment. And, like, the other moment, I think, as well, was there was a few years before that when, like, Hayden Christensen and Ian McDermott oh, yeah, just, they like, came showed back. up for a panel and, like, they hadn't been announced or anything. I was just like... And Hayden's just sitting there like, fuck, everyone hates me, but, every, like, the audience embraced him. Whatever, no, and enough like, time had passed now when now they're warming up to Hayden. Yeah. And I think that's how he got convinced. I think they're like, no, people are going to be kind to you. 
you now. Yeah, I think I think it was a nice moment. Yeah. actually, that it's funny as well because especially with that because Armin Best has always still been involved with Star Wars. Like he still goes to all yeah. these conventions, and I know how he survived it because he got the worst hatred out of everyone. But like people have warmed up to Jar Jar in a sense that now he gets like praise when he's in front of fans. So that's that's still pretty funny. I've always loved yeah, Jar Jar. Know. So you know that's that's my. This cro- is if you want more of that, bloody go to our Star Wars episode. That's my cross to bear. Uh. To be fair, I was like I was like five when that movie came out. In my defense, so still praised it, and he was what twenty four then. Like <laughs> Nathan, let's talk about this film's yeah. poster. Uh, Blanton. Uh, yes. Let's look at this film's poster. But is it art? I think I can't make up my mind. This is a very interesting poster and it work it works in some regards because i'll tell you why nathan <laughs> what is going on it's kind of like it's kind of like in my view it could be like eve's view of like how she's going to like you know you know like when you see like someone that's like a detective and they've like they've got like their wall and oh with got, the red like, string like all that yeah the red string like connecting it all it's like maybe it's like a connection to that of eve's just like this is how i pull them apart tech the heart peter the heart <laughs> Honestly, this poster looks like someone's just fucking about Microsoft PowerPoint. Like, they found, like, the <laughs> yeah, arrow true. symbol, and they're like, look at all this. I can change the color. <laughs> like, I can make this straight. I don't think it's good. It's also so confusing. Like, what the fuck are you meant to be getting out of this? Like, you see all the different couples, like, with, like, the That's arrows it. pointed towards the hearts. Like, And then it just, the last arrow is pointing to a close-up, like, quarter shot. A headshot of Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, I'm like, and it's funny because if you look at how the characters are lined up, I don't know why they're matched with those characters. Okay, here's the thing as well. I think when I when I think about it, I think I know what I'd want the poster to be instead. You know, yeah, what, I mean? what yeah. I'd want the poster to be, and that and simply, I think what it needs to be is just like a close up image of Eve, since that's yeah. you know the titular character, and then like maybe in like the background, like have in the shadows Betty Davis. Yeah, exactly. Ah, okay, nice. Just like hanging over the shoulder, just like inspecting, like maybe just like what's going on there. What's a, what's going on? See, with I like that a lot, but for me, because because my biggest issue with this poster is that tonally it sells it as a romantic comedy. It's yeah, all about right. the, the slogans like it's all about women and their men, and so you think it's going to be like a little romp. What I think you should do, Brenton, is do a horror poster for this movie. No, but see, no, that's too much. Like, like I like this poster at the same time because it doesn't reveal. Anything. Yeah, see, my po- yeah, I see that because I wanted to reveal that you Eve's know what the I mean? villain. I want to like, I want it to be like the like the door to the makeup room like creaked open slightly, and then Eve kind of pops her head and like grinning like evilly, just like <laughs> like holding a dress. Like that's that's what I want the poster to be. Yeah, it's just too much to me. Like you gotta be, it's gotta be subtle. Like you can't give away like your your best hand. Okay, what know? about Mar? Okay, how about all of them on the staircase with? Marilyn, like in that one shot. Yeah, sure. I like why that not? one. And they were That's all just a good like, frame. And they're all just looking up at the camera like they've been caught, like, oh, and Eve's in the middle, like it's all about me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> just do the same poster as Emperor's New Groove, where it says, It's all about me. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of Cusco, it's just Eve. With like the big Emmy just like faded behind her. Like <laughs> there we go. Emperor's New Groove, you've done it again. Title talk. <laughs> Ooh, it's a title. All about Eve. I see, I fucking love this movie even more because the opening scene does its own title talk. Because like George know, Sanders right? is like <laughs> Like, there's Eve. The movie's all about her, but hmm, we'll get to that later. <laughs> I'm like, you do you, George Sanders. I'm all for this. I totally agree. Uh, I love that moment in the movie. And But was this all about Eve? It wasn't all about Eve, like literally. Like if we're looking if we're looking at a literal title. <laughs> like every frame, it's just Eve. Like <laughs> she just can't escape it. Like. <laughs> totally. But um no, because this is this as we've said, we've discussed probably Betty Davis more than we have um uh Anne Baxter. Yeah, but all about Margaret doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? No, exactly. It, it the, the title is brilliant though at the same yeah. time. Yeah, and like thematically, it is all about Eve, the younger actress. They're all talking about Eve, so I, I can see why it works. Absolutely, yeah. No, it's a perfect title, I think, even though it's literally not all about no, it. so I'll forgive it for that just because it's a genius piece of art. Sorry, guys. But moving on, let's pass the power, all of Eve's power, to the people. <laughs> Pass it here. What? The power to the people. So if you look at the tomato meter, All About Eve has a critical consensus of 99% with an audience score of 94%. Woo! That is, that is posh. That is high numbers. That is looking good. That is looking... Everyone, f- except for the 1%, love this movie, but enough about that 1%, Brenton. It was you, is it? You submitted a review on IMDb and you just shut on it for fun, didn't no, you? No, I would never do that to this movie. But it's funny <laughs> as well, because like box office wise... No, actually, you know what's really funny? So only 74 critics gave this review and yet it has 99%. So I know how that works, but like, you know, you do the math. But box office wise, this cost 1.4 million to make, which back for 1950 is a fair bit. Also, how the fuck did this movie cost 1.4 to make? I guess not 
not that big of a movie. That makes sense. There's a lot of sets. There's a lot of um different um settings and whatnot. Uh, I think maybe they film. ordered actual champagne for the set. You know, maybe 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 the cast like you know there was this pretty star studded cast. Maybe they needed they want to, that uh, dough. They needed. But here's the thing: cost one point four to make. It made eight point four million back then, which to, in today's money is eighty nine million dollars. Wow, pretty good profit margin. Pretty good. He was making bank. <laughs> Nelson Burns is making bank at the career man. Oh, I hope so. Australia. <laughs> In the role of the elder actress, Betty Davis plays with a brilliance that not only is the best acting she's ever shown us, but just about the best that has been done on the screen. Nathan, this supports your uh, opinion from before. I wonder why I chose that review. <laughs> <laughs> More like power to Nathan. <laughs> but you know, but but Nelson's got a point. Like it's it's definitely up there. When I think of I, when I think of my favorite female performances, this is definitely up there. Even also, just actually forget the female part. Just all performances in general. This is definitely up there. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's 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 a fantastic. The film. only one that really sticks out in my mind. I don't know if you've, have you seen the movie Precious, based on the novel Pushed by Sapphire? No, I have not. I, I have not. I know of yeah. it, but I haven't seen it. There's the one, one of the performances in there is absolutely up there. I'd recommend for listeners if you want to see great female performances. That's really really good. I shall check it out. Please do. And let's check out DJ B from the Age. DJ B. He or she liked it because they wrote, "Never has a film, both in story and in technique, been brought more closely to the stage than All About Eve." It's appeal and success depend on almost entirely on gesture and conversation. And that's a good point. Gesture and conversation. There's a lot of subtext in this movie you don't get in others. I, yeah. And it's funny that it's so theatrical, yet this is this was done first in film. Like, I th- would have thought immediately this would have come from the theatre first. Totally. Because in the same way that Hollywood loves do- filming about Hollywood, the theatre loves doing theatre about theatre. That is true. So DJB's onto it. Tony Sloman from Radio Times says, A classic movie whose qualities remind us that there once was a Hollywood where such sophisticated treats could be made sophisticated treats. Ooh, I'd love to be called a sophisticated treat. I am a sophisticated <laughs> treat. <Ooh. laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it is, like, after doing all these classics, like, Christ, it really, like, you know, verifies this podcast existence. But, you know, I don't want to toot the horn that the movies were better back then, but, like, <laughs> geez, why is Hollywood not making this kind of shit anymore? You know what I mean? Like, even a good film about Hollywood we haven't had in a while? Like, La La Land tried. Uh, once Upon a Time in Hollywood. No, fuck off, Brett. That's not of calibre. Oh, come on, Nathan. Settle down. Nah. It's all good. Like, yeah, Tarantino tried. Try. Like, to his credit, he did try. But, like, we haven't had one in a while, I think, is really... Oh, by the way, Tarantino's Hollywood is not of calibre of, like, all about it. Calm down. <laughs> well, we're making <laughs> statements here today, mate. Like, it's I, I want to see some shit like this, Brenton. That's all I want. I get what you mean. Yes, I, I can understand where you're coming from, that they don't make them like this anymore. Oh, no. oh, but it's funny, as, like, as a 24-year-old man, I feel like I shouldn't be saying this. <laughs> in saying that, we Hollywood does uh, produce a lot of... Like, I, I, I'd argue, like, there's, there's been some fantastic films in the past decade, but um I, I see a point that, like, it'd be interesting to see something that, that does what this movie does again. But, hey, that's what makes it special. So, if you want that, just pop on this movie, dude. I will. I'll watch this 10 times. You you watch me. Conrad A. gave it one star. What, what the f- fuck what and says Ser- seriously why not like and it's not a question either like why it's like why <laughs> like it's, why it's, 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 it's all exclamation marks seriously why why must this movie be old-fashioned again like it's asking why but it doesn't end with a question mark this is bizarre seriously why why must this movie be old-fashioned i don't like old-fashioned movies and it is in black in wit movie boo stupid movie <laughs> Oh, Christ. That's such like a Trump tweet of a review, isn't it? Like, oh. Uh, it, it totally is. I disagree. Well, I mean, obviously we disagree. I can definitely see there is, there's definitely audiences that, will, this is not their movie. Yeah, no, you're right. It's interesting, isn't it? Like, we 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 make this show and we're like, these movies are still worth watching. Yeah. But there's still like that edge that you have to get over in that yeah. sense of like, some people just can't get over it. That this movie came out 70 years ago and it was made in a different time um, when different different technology was available and, and, and this is what was produced. It does doesn't look like a movie that came out this year. And there's also that danger that that this, that this raises, where like the more you and I do this this show, and the more like well read we get with this, we do run that risk of sounding pretentious. Where like we now yeah only like which I don't think we will because we'll keep doing the odd like Wild Wild West and like the odd cats here and there, so like <laughs> it'll keep us grounded, mate. That's that's my job on this show. It's like <laughs> yeah. no matter how high we <laughs> climb, it's Brenda that'll keep us planted firmly on the floor. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jeez. And Thick Boss 47 finally wrote on YouTube, If Sunset Boulevard panders to cinema, all about Eve panders to theatre. Perhaps that's why it won the Oscars, despite being very dialogue heavy when compared to Sunset Boulevard's stunning film noir visuals. Sunset Boulevard was still pretty dialogue heavy as well. Yeah, that's the thing. I think this is more of an actor's movie, because like in Sunset, Gloria got all the attention, essentially. Yeah, like, and I think like it's, again, like if you look at kind of, uh, you know, when we talk about Sunset Boulevard, we talk about different things, and this, and, and this, we talk about the screenplay, you know what I mean? Mm. Like that was like the number one thing for us both, was like the screenplay. Uh, so I can understand why dialogue heavy is, is said to a certain degree, but like, you know, Sunset Boulevard also had a strong screenplay and, and good dialogue, but like like you said, like visually, like Sunset Boulevard's probably more enticing. Yeah, absolutely. I, definitely visually, or because they have Billy Wilder behind the camera. But this doesn't need that. It's still visually interesting no. enough. No, and, and I think it would have been distracting if the directing was anything more than what it was. That's it, and I, I think it's very well directed. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's bizarre that this one best director over Sunset Boulevard when you think about it. Yes! If you're voting for a director, like, but I'm not writing saying... as well. I'm not saying that one's better than the other in terms of, like, direction and, and, and filmmaking. I think they both serve their purpose. Yeah. But it's nice to see that the Academy voted for that. You know what's so funny? To... When we reviewed Sunset Boulevard, I remember now, you and I were very confused that it, this, that, that, that it didn't win the Oscars. I think I think if you go back to that episode, there's a recording of us going like, all about Eve, what's this shit? Why did this movie win? <laughs> so, and and future selves now, now that we know. But it's it's nice to see that like, because I feel like sometimes nowadays the Academy kind of panders towards directors and cinematographers that do gimmick stuff, you yeah, know, and, and visual tricks more than like they do. Like your Wes Anderson's or like all that. Even though he actually hasn't won any. <laughs> Not saying that the movies that do win aren't deserving of it and aren't serving their stories, but sometimes I feel like the gimmick comes first over the what the story is and like how it's serving that so it's nice to see but on the other hand Brenton if Tom Hooper can win best director anyone can (laughs) sign us up and with that being said thank you Thick Boss first of all 47 (laughs) that was uh, all about Eve that was all about Eve Brenton oh boy we just know so much about her now Including that's not even her real name. <laughs> it's Gertrude. Bloody Gertrude. Bloody oh, Gertrude. That's what they should have called the movie. Bloody Gertrude. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Title talk. There we are. There's a new title. It. I'm down for that. Oh. Bloody Gertrude. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in again onto Classic Movie Banter. We really do. Big, I'm just, as you say that, I'm just imagining like someone with their iPhone quite, trying to like quite literally tune it. Like, what yeah, frequency yeah. are these boys on? <laughs> They've got like a radio and antenna like attached to their iPhone and they're just like trying to like... <laughs> What frequency are they on? No, Grandma. This is not how you listen to a podcast. Quiet, boy. <laughs> uh, Grandma, as well, if you could please just give us a review on the podcast app or like, like, subscribe, do all that shit. We love it when you guys do that. And more importantly, suggest new movies for us to review. Yeah. You know? Well, not new movies, old movies, I mean. Like, suggest old movies for us to review. As long as it's older than 20 years, we'll chat about it. Clearly, we'll talk about anything at this stage, right? <laughs> <laughs> Literally anything that's older than 20 years. Yeah. That, that's a movie, <laughs> hopefully. Like, we don't just be like, ScoMo, what's he up to? He's older than 20 years. Here on this show, we talk about things that are older than 20 years and then you come out with like ScoMo's exact age. <laughs> That'd be great. Because normally we like to, because uh, peek behind the curtain, but normally we like to align movies with their anniversaries. So like same thing with like this movie yeah. was like it turned 70 years. So like it'd be funny if we did people because we just do it on their birthdays. Totally. <laughs> it'd be great. Uh, such such as our birthday specials. But Nathan, again, I got to say, don't even suggest new movies. Tell us what you thought about All About Eve. Is it as good as what we're saying? Or is it, you know, is it something that you just don't really see what, what, what we're saying? You're just like, All About Eve, that was all right. But it wasn't, you know, best movie ever made or anything. You know what I mean? Like, let us know. We're all about the perspectives on here, on the about the different opinions. The thumbs up, the thumbs down, and the thumbs in between. That's that's us. <laughs> that's us in a nutshell. <laughs> Well, Nathan, thanks for chatting, mate. It's been you're fun. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'll see you next week for another movie because that's what we're here to do. Are we? Yes, movies, Brenton. Oh, oh, oh.